have unlocked the eternal link to internal source. The key of imagination, your admission. Access to the enlightened dimension. A gateway at the junction of darkness and light. The place at which the chaos of our conditioned frame of mind give way to a life in constant flux, only to be mastered through vigilant discipline. Peaceful times may come, testing times may go. This is the ebb and flow. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ebb and Flow podcast. I am your host, Evan Britton. I hope you guys are hanging tough out there. Boy, we are really flying down the rabbit hole now, aren't we? Well, anyway, to keep things positive and to keep things moving in a upward direction, I wanted to do a quick episode, another solo episode on the importance of movement and exercise. You know, in the midst of all of this coronavirus pandemonium that we find ourselves in, very little is being said or very little information is being given from the mainstream talking heads, the mainstream media about how to actually improve your immune system, how to increase the function of your physical body to combat various viruses, bacteria, fungi, whatever it is. Um, and so, you know, to go along with my first podcast on meditation and my second podcast on nutrition, which you guys seem to appreciate very much. I am going to the next pillar of health and well-being, which in my view is exercise and movement. It's very important for your overall well-being, not only for your physical body, but it's very important for your mental well-being as well. Now, as maybe you can tell if you've been following me for a while, I don't necessarily prescribe to any specific uh, diet plan. I don't think that there's a one size fits all program for everyone on the planet. I think that everyone's body is different. Everyone's genetic makeup is different. Everyone needs different things to experience their level of optimum health for themselves. I think there are some pillars of truth in taking care of yourself and how to do that. For instance, you don't want to eat processed bullshit and stay away from you know, the sugars and uh, processed carbohydrates, uh, limit your alcohol consumption as much as possible, uh, et cetera, et cetera, as well as you know, for your emotional and mental well-being. It's really important as we, as we careen down this highway of technological advancement that we begin to take some responsibility for how we use and abuse our technology, whether that's social media or our computers, et cetera. It's vital to our survival as a species that we get a handle on this thing, that we start to reel this in and understand what it's doing to us psychologically, mentally, emotionally as well as what it's doing to our physical bodies and our physical being. So, in my opinion, the three, when you break it all down, you break everything down and you get to the simplest form of how to best take care of yourself. There's a million things out there. So for me, the three pillars of wellness are meditation, which includes not only a meditative practice, but in that also includes some sort of connection with a higher power, some sort of connection with spirit, some sort of spirituality. So that's that. We've talked about that in, in, a, in a previous podcast on meditation. And I'll go, I'll do other solo podcasts to go into more detail on what I believe 
as far as spirituality goes. The next pillar of wellness is nutrition. It absolutely matters what you're putting into your body, what foods you're eating, what drinks you're drinking, what supplements you're taking, what prescription drugs you're taking. It all absolutely matters for your overall well being. So we did a podcast on that. And I will go in, again, I will go into more detail on that in another podcast as well down the road. Today, we are going to hit on the, in my opinion, the third pillar of wellness, which makes up this trinity of well-being, and that is movement and exercise and the importance of moving your body, the importance of getting outside, breathing, getting your skin exposed to the sun, feeling your blood flow through your body, feeling oxygen come into your lungs and fill your, your whole system and energize you. Sweating. It's vitally important for your lymphatic system, which is part of your immune system. How your body takes in and gets rid of toxins. A lot of that is handled through sweat and through your breath. So these two things are vitally important. Two things that are seldom talked about, if ever, during this coronavirus craze. So here we go. Once again, as, as I have said in previous episodes, you know, I don't prescribe to any specific practice. I believe that all movement is good. You don't have to be an Olympic power lifter or a bodybuilder to be in good shape to have a high fitness level. Things that I think are fantastic, some of my favorite physical practices are absolutely yoga. Hey, I know, all the yoga studios are, are closed right now. They're all shut down, at least if you live in California. And I don't see when they're gonna be opening back up because we just keep coming up with cases. There's just more and more cases every day. So many cases, we can't even fucking wrap our head around it. So God knows when a yoga studio is going to open up again. And that's okay. We don't need a yoga studio to practice yoga. That's part of the myth of Western culture is that you have to go and everything is compartmentalized and you've got to go to this place to do this thing. And you've got to go here to do that. No, all you need is your body, your breath, and your will, and you can make it happen, whatever it is. It's like building this podcast. All I needed was a laptop. I didn't even need a microphone. I needed just some access point into the mainframe, which is the internet, to start creating this thing. So the same goes with everything else in life, guys. You can do whatever you fucking desire. If you put your heart and your will into it, it will manifest itself into your reality. Believe me. You don't need some fucking billionaire telling you what to do and where to go and what to eat and fucking inject yourself with. You don't need any of that. You need a flat ground and you need your fucking willpower. And that's it. Yoga, fantastic. Go online. Go on YouTube. Find a simple yoga practice. Some of my favorite exercises or at least yoga flow routines are called sun salutations. It's very simple. It's probably what you've seen a million times. You know, if you've ever seen yoga being done <laughs> in uh, some, you know, on a movie or a TV or show or whatever it is, they're probably doing sun salutations. So it doesn't have to be super complex. As long as you're moving with the breath, Find yourself a great yoga practice if that sounds appealing to you. Also, I think just conventional stretching is fantastic. Once again, you need very little. You need maybe a doorway would be helpful to get you to stretch your body uh, efficiently. Maybe somewhere about hip level where you can put your foot up to stretch your hamstrings. I mean, these are all things that as you get going, 
They're very simple. They're very easy. Stretching is a fantastic physical practice. As you loosen up your physical body and your physical tissues and you create fluidity in your physical form, you will also create fluidity in your mental being. This is facts. I'm not a scientist. I do believe in the scientific method. I think that in 2020, we have vastly outshot and out... <laughs> outgained our scientific belief system. Science has become dogma for many people in this country, and it's a problem. It is an absolute problem. However, I do believe in the scientific method. And all of us are scientists. If you're a living, breathing human being, and you pay attention to what you do and how you do things, Every day, you're experimenting with yourself. Pay attention. Pay attention. Listen to your intuition. Follow your heart. Stop thinking so fucking much. We live in a world paralyzed by faux intellectualism. Not enough people living and doing. Too many people having fucking judgments and ideas about what's going on and what other people are doing. It's a problem. So yoga, stretching, fantastic practices. Fantastic for the total body system. I'm going to work my way up here as we go. So just hang on. I'm sort of riffing. Uh, I'm, I've got a lot to say. And, you know, who knows how it's going to come out, but I've got to do it. And hopefully you guys are interested in listening to it. So the next thing that I think is fantastic is just walking. Walk around your neighborhood. Walk around, walk down the street. Walk as much as you possibly can. If you can get 10,000 steps in a day, you're killing it. One of the best things about your iPhone or whatever phone you have is that little health app that tracks how many steps you have. It's one of my favorite uh, aspects of, of having an iPhone is tracking how many steps I take during the day. Walking is one of my favorite things to do. Walking is not only great for your overall physical body, but take a look do a little of your own research at what happens to your brain when you start walking. You start creating all these synapses. You create clarity. You bring uh, connectivity. Your cognitive function starts to increase at an incredible rate. It's fantastic for your mind, walking. So that's stretching, some form of stretching. You can make it more structured in a yoga practice, but yoga also incorporates cardiovascular strength, endurance, flexibility, uh, as well as isometric holding. Isometric holding is any time you, for instance, a pillar bridge for your abdominals or a wall sit, or you strike any position, posture, et cetera, and you hold it for an extended period of time, that's an isometric hold. These things are fantastic for your skeletal system, for all those tiny musculature uh, and tendons and ligaments that are all connected to your bones. This, great, this creates a great inner strength. So I highly recommend that as well. Push-ups. I don't know if you can find a better exercise than push-ups. If you don't have any time during the day, if you're a busy person, like many of us are, you're trying to bust your ass to create your empire. I, I totally believe in that. However, there are things you must do. You've got to take care of your physical body first. And for me, my physical well-being is directly linked to my mental well-being. So if I don't take the time each and every day to cut out 30 minutes to an hour minimum for me to get my physical exercise in, I'm going to be a mess mentally. 
psychologically, I'm not going to be at my best. I'm not going to be as clear as I, as I want to be. I'm not going to be as full of joy as I want to be. So I make sure to prioritize my physical practice every day. And all of us can do this. It doesn't stop bullshitting yourself that you're too busy and you got too much going on. Pencil it into your schedule. Take one less fucking meeting and take that time to get your exercise in. Your overall productiveness and your overall efficiency in your career will improve when you take care of yourself and you take better care of yourself. So it's vitally important across the board. Now, does that mean you got to hustle and get to the gym every day? No. In fact, for me, coronavirus has really shown me how, how much I can actually get done just working out at home. And almost what a massive waste of time it is to drive to the gym, get my workout in at the gym, do whatever else it is that I'm doing there, maybe get in the sauna, et cetera, which is great too, obviously. And then driving home. Now I've, I've killed two and a half, three hours of my day driving to and from the gym and doing that whole rigmarole. So for me, you can get a great workout and you can get an efficient, sufficient workout in, no problem, at home. With just your body and a floor and a doorway. So push-ups are a fantastic exercise. I probably get 100 to 150 push-ups in a day just sort of as a as a base level fitness test for myself every day. I'll do sets of 20, I'll do sets of 30, whatever it might be. I just I get them in because they make you feel good, they get your blood pumping and it's a great total body exercise. It's great for your core, it's great for your cardiovascular system. It's fantastic. So I highly recommend push-ups. Weightlifting is also one of my favorite exercises. Weightlifting in all its various forms, whether that's with dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, etc. Get yourself something heavy and start moving with it. There's a million practices you can do. I think they're all great. For me, it's all about these days, it's all about function, functionality. Can I create exercises and programs for myself that imitate potential life situations? What if you had to throw a 50, what if you had to throw your child on your back and walk for 10 miles? Could you do it? How much endurance do you have? How much strength do you have? We must test ourselves. You must create tests for yourself. You must push yourself physically and mentally. And I guarantee you, the more you push yourself physically and mentally, the more you'll have to give to the world in your career, with your family, with your friends. Because when the shit comes down, it's about how much balls you have, how much will you have, how much tenacity, how much fight. Western culture has lulled us to sleep into a state of everything. We, we take everything for granted. That's what you're seeing right now. That's what coronavirus has presented. Now everyone has, a, has an excuse or has a reason to say, oh, I take life seriously because I wear a mask. And because I'm practicing social distancing and I'm locking myself in my room for the rest of my fucking life. No. The truth is you have taken life for granted. While I have taken this motherfucker seriously, as serious as life and death, in fact, for as long now as I can remember, because you understand how important it is to exercise. You understand how important it is, what food you're eating. 
what chemicals you're putting into your body in various forms. You understand the importance of connecting with nature, connecting with your loved ones. This is the time, guys. This is where we're at. Movement is vital to our survival. It always has been. Early man had to hunt and gather his food. You had to be able to move. You had to be mobile to get away from predators. You had to be able to move to find a safe place for your family to live. Now we have to be able to move to keep our body and our minds healthy, to keep your spirit healthy. So where were we? Weightlifting is fantastic. I highly recommend any sort of resistance training. Maybe you can afford it. Maybe you can't. I totally understand both sides of that. Um, if you can, get yourself some kettlebells. Or what I love. I think a great tool, obviously, are kettlebells of various sizes, and you have to figure out what sizes work well for you. You can get a lot out of anywhere from a 10-pound kettlebell to a 50-pound kettlebell and beyond, depending on your level of strength and fitness. You can get a lot out of adjustable dumbbell complexes. There's these great company called Power Blocks. They make fantastic adjustable dumbbells. They're fantastic. I highly recommend those. I highly recommend getting yourself a pull-up bar if you're interested in that. Hey, if you're someone who can go on a, take long walks, have a daily yoga practice or a stretching routine, and that serves you well, that's beautiful. I love that. As long as you're doing something, we need to sweat, guys. You need to move the toxins in and out of your body. We're picking up a lot of shit, not only through the food we eat, but through the air we breathe. Our pores are open. Our bodies are open vessels. We're constantly absorbing shit just from the air and the environment around us. So it's vital that we sweat to clear the channel, continue to clear out your lymphatic system. So weightlifting is fantastic. Any body weight movements are great. Like I said, I love push-ups. I love body weight squats. I love my pull-up bar. That's a vital part of my toolkit and my movement practice. Um, and really just keep it simple, guys. You know, what do you like to do? If you're someone who hasn't worked out in 10 years, that's fine. You don't need to go and do an Olympic power lifter weight training program. Start with a walk around your neighborhood. Get yourself a yoga mat. Do a little bit of stretching. Do some floor, floor exercises. You can find tons of good stuff online. It's about moving. It's about using your body. It's the only thing you've got. Literally, at the end of the day, it's all you've got. You don't have anything else. Your job, you could lose that. Your fucking car, who cares? As long as it gets you from A to B. As long as you can put food on the table. That, that is vitally important. And how do you do that? Well, you got to stay, stay healthy. So your body and mind, crucial to your survival. And you've got to feed the machine. How do you do that? Through the foods you eat and how you move your body. And then, you know, if you want to really live a life full of peace and joy and happiness, whatever the fuck that means, I suggest you connect with a higher power. Something greater than yourself. You don't have to call it God. I don't care you know, what it is. It doesn't really matter. 
We all have our own connection to spirit, to the source that created all things. But on the physical dimension, it begins with movement and nutrition. Move your body. What are you compelled to do? What are you interested in doing? Maybe you want to go take boxing classes or get your, well, of course, everything's closed, so you can't really do that. But I, I guarantee you, you can go online today and find a coach or a trainer who's willing to go to, go to the park with you, hold up some mitts, and let you fire away. There's myriad things you can do to get yourself moving. Just think about, take some time. If, if you're a guy like me and physical exercise, a guy or gal like myself, that physical exercise has been, you know, a life's part of your life's journey and something that you know has always kept you sane and well, then this, this message isn't really for you. If you're someone who hasn't worked out in 10 years, this might be more for you. It starts with one step. Take a great walk. Take your dog for a walk around the neighborhood. It's beautiful outside. There's fresh air. There's sun. Nature is thriving right now, guys. And I suggest we all take notice of that. That's a positive, no matter how you slice it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the sun on your skin. Enjoy the fresh air, the breeze. This life is meant to be enjoyed. And here we are allowing our, our so-called our so -called leaders and our so-called authority figures, our self-proclaimed authority figures, wanting to box us in. And we have to continue to live. We have to continue to thrive. We have to continue to do the things to keep ourselves strong, healthy, and intact. So this was just sort of a starter kit. I hope this, I, I shed some light for you on, or some bit of inspiration on how to get going in your physical practice. At least I hope I stress to you the importance of some sort of physical practice, whatever that may be, you know, whether it's push-ups, a walk around your neighborhood, or a full-blown weightlifting program. You can head over to my website, ebonbritton.com, for more information. I'm always putting stuff up there, and I will continue to put more and more up there, whether those are yoga flows or weightlifting programs, etc. I'm going to keep it really simple because I believe that's what we need. We don't need most of us, most of us don't need a whole lot of detail and scientific fucking what have you. You just need some basics on how to get started. Because the reality is, guys, you have everything you need inside of you already. You have the legs to carry you wherever you need to go. You have the arms to lift and hold and push and do everything you need to do. And in, in that skull of yours, you've got the mind to imagine it, to visualize it. And then you've got that heart beating inside your chest. That's the thing that all of this is about. It's about your heart. It's about your desire and your will to live and what you believe in yourself of who you are and what you're destined to do here. So lots of love to you guys. I hope this was helpful. I know I'm pretty fired up, but hey, <laughs> these are some fired up times and it's only gonna get crazier. So hang tight. So there we have it, the third pillar of wellness from my perspective. You've got your meditation, you've got your nutrition, and now we're talking about movement. Get outside and move, man. Whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be super scientific. It doesn't have to be super structured. Just get outside and move. Stretch. Move your body. Take a walk. Run a block. Walk a block. Go for a run. 
Whatever it might be, just move, sweat, feel your blood flow through your veins. Take those deep breaths in, through, into the belly and feel that oxygen just energize your entire system. It's beautiful. God, it's beautiful. All right, y'all. Well, if you need more info, head over to ebonbritton.com. You'll find everything I'm doing there. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Enjoy this one. It's all we've got. Tomorrow is definitely not promised. So much love to you all. Hang tough. Stay in the paint. Lots of love. I'm out. Peace.